Hello, welcome back to the Fish Locker. It's a stunning day, we've been allowed out to play, so we're going to go and get wet. You might see a floating head over my shoulder there somewhere. <laughs> Let's go and get wet. It's not bad, that is it. Clarity there. You fraggle rock. For anybody old enough to know what a fraggle is. For those that aren't actually, I'll tag a picture in up here. That clarity there, look. What's oh, great, Mr. Solo? Get out of it. I love you. The clarity for us today was like a dream come true. Incredible for this time of year. And if you look carefully, you can see a very sneaky scallop. Not a massive one, but a good start. Often, all you'll see is a little hollow and an outline. Be careful if diving for these without gloves on, as they can be very sharp. I found a few of these on a recent dive and they really do make me smile. This is a male masked crab and they spend much of their time completely buried in the sand. Fascinating aren't they? They can get some speed up when they want to can't they? See you later little fella. Now at first I couldn't quite figure out what was going on with this spider crab. They were actually having their honeymoon. My apologies for the interruption. Please carry on. This one simply thinks it's too camouflaged to be seen. Think again sunshine. Fine male spider crab. Catch you later. This one was really well camouflaged, wasn't it? We found some incredible scallops. I was absolutely over the moon. I laid mine out on the seabed to try and show you how they swim. This is how they move around. And this is how they hide themselves under the sand. Clever, isn't it? It 
It really is wonderful to see such a healthy population. Now this is something that's really important to us. We had found enough for us to eat. Taking any more than that would be just greedy and would be harmful to the population and the balance of the ecosystem. In just a matter of two weeks since my last dive, the amount of seaweed growth is incredible. Great to see some more big ballinrass around. And a good look around the cracks and crevices, I soon find a little lobster. And some stunning twin fan tube worms. Hello there, Mr. Lobster. We've been looking for you. And with just the right persuasion, out he came. No matter how many of these I've seen, I still love that blue. You, sir, have an invite to dinner. I think I might have been a seal in a past life, because I just love this. A couple of little wrasses hiding in the back, and a really camouflaged short spined sea scorpion. Let's go see what else we can find. Will there getting deep into a cave looking for a lobster. No joy this time though. Some of these little tunnels take you to completely hidden pools. Each time you never know what you might find. In here was a really fancy male leopard spotted goby. And right at the back is actually a small top knot. These ledges were just packed with life. Bingo. Let's have a look at you then. When I came down a second time, this lobster had already tried to make a run for it. Where do you think you're going? Ah, a sneaky one. Right, I'll try that again. Deep breath this time, maximum effort. Gently does it. Once you get behind the claws, there isn't much they can do. Just do not grab hold of the claws, because they can shed them off. And out you come.
This is actually an egg-bearing female lobster. You can see there under her tail where she's holding all of her eggs. Wonderful to see. It is illegal to retain lobsters that are carrying eggs. Rightly so in my opinion. So let's get you back down where you belong. There you go little lady, and take care of yourself. In these little crevices was a pair of conger eels. And a little prawny bodyguard. I feel that these two balans were probably protecting a nest nearby somewhere. They were very protective over this little area. <sighs> well, I don't, I don't need to say, we were all absolutely knackered. How many hours have we spent in the water drinking? Four, 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 four or five hours in total. We're a fantastic little area of sand. We found some stunning scallops and then went onto all the rocks and then we've just come inside of here to try and find one of Chris's pots which I think has been um, how would you say borrowed by somebody oh. yeah had a dive around in here to see what we could find and I've found this which apart from the fact that it is like a ginormous starfish it's got an extra leg so yeah that was quite special but in here Some incredible scallops. I think Will found the biggest one. And a couple of them. I found it. Yeah, that's mine. That's I found a male. Chris found a lovely female. So yeah, definitely a success. Now for the cook up. Yeah, well we have a wonderful day. We divvied up the catch, Chris, Will and I, and I have my lobster and a few of the scallops in there. I'm just starting a little fire to get some coals and we have all of the fish lockers, even the forgotten fish locker which is hiding at the back. <laughs> we have Jim from Spargo's Kitchen that you may recognise and further down the beach I have some more of Hannah's Wave. family. So yeah, it is a rare occasion. Finally allowed to go out and play together. So when we've got some coals, we'll spread them out and we will sort out the catch. But we have some, um, we're gonna do some steamed salmon in a tin. We're gonna do some uh, baked, steamed. We're gonna cook some lobster. And, and bake, the, bake the lobster. And then we're gonna cook some scallops in the half shell. Scallops in the half shell. <laughs> and James is currently digging a pit. Aren't you? I'm He's digging another one now, okay. So there we are. Now, all I'm doing is I'm using offcuts from pieces of pallet from the fish locker workshop. I've flattened out an area of sand and I'm just building up some coals. So I just want these to burn off and I'm going to smooth them all out as a better coals to cook on. It's like a really dangerous game of Jenga, isn't it? Oh, that is a deep hole, James. We're going to end up in China. We have Mr. Lobster and some of the lovely scallops in here. They'll have my finger off if I'm not careful. Now, I'm going to dispatch him and then we'll get him butchered up and we'll talk about what we're going to do. Right, I've butchered off Mr. Lobster and I've cleaned out all of the internal organs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I am going to separate the claws and give them a bit of a knock with a rock because you need to open up the shell otherwise you'll get none of the flavours in there. And Hannah, you are just... Oops, picking. sorry. If you can hear the clacking, it's it's the fire behind us. I'm picking um, pips out of lemon. So we're going to do two separate parcels. We're going to do one half with garlic, butter and lemon. And then the other one, we've brought a hot sauce. So we're going to do it similar to how we do the scallops. A bit but of an experiment. We've never done it with hot sauce before, so we will find out. We're going to... 
parchment paper and foil and then we're just going to sit it direct in the coals. So squeeze the lemon over it, crazy garlic, some butter and that's it and I'm just going to fold them up in the parchment paper. The parcel inside the parcel. Pretty much. Just to give it some extra protection from the flames. This is the one with the hot sauce, so I've squeezed some lemon on, butter, and just drizzled over some of the... You can see, look, I've, I've had to crack the claw just to let a little bit of it in. Thank you for my gloves, Jim. Well done. So I'm just going to parcel this one up. Like the fourth. There's the other one. What we have is we have a new cooking tin. You might remember the tin I had before. Unfortunately, we cooked through it. So I'm just searing the tin off. Just leaving it on the fire for a while just to take off any of the lacquer or any of the paint. And inside of it, you can see I've just bent a little bit of disposable barbecue wire. Right, I've seared off the tin and you can see I've just got a little bit of seawater in there. The lobster parcels are on the coals in the fire and I'm just creating a few more on that side. And here, Hannah is parceling up some of the salmon. What have you got, my darling? Lemon, butter, garlic, parsley and red onion. So similar to that day when we first experimented with our tin cooking. The only thing we're missing is um, we used some rock samphire. Yeah, some samphire. One of them we put in some kelp, didn't we? But yeah. For the ones that aren't partial to shellfish, we went to Seabourns and got some salmon. Now this is from our local local fishmongers. You can do this with, with any type of fish, it doesn't have to be salmon. You can do this in the oven at home, it's a really, really tasty way of cooking it. Flattened out the coals, we've got the salmon parcels in there, and all we'll do is you just put the lid on. Now, you don't put the lid on tight, because obviously you'll build, ste build steam in there and it'll blow the lid off. So the lid is on, and it's just cupped, just to allow a little bit of pressure out. You could, if you wanted to, you could poke some holes in the lid of the tin, but just leave it cocked and it should be fine. We'll just get that sat on there. I don't know if you can hear the lobster. I can hear it sizzling inside of those parcels. We'll time that as well, that's just gone on. Right, there we have all of the scallops. I'll show you really quickly. This is, that's a good one to show you. That is the disc of muscle. This is the frill. There's its internal organs, like its stomach. And that white and orange part there is called the coral or the roe. So we'll be eating that white part and that orange and white part there. There is a very good way of getting them all out. I'll show you really quick. If you take your knife, grip hold of it all, you can pull over the top and it just leaves that behind. So wash this out. That's ready to go on the coals. So we've done our favourite way of cooking scallops. We've got half with garlic butter and parsley, half with butter and hot sauce. When they're on the coals, we'll just give them a squeeze of lemon juice. Mm. Just in time for them to come off. Oh yeah, they do look stunning. It's a fantastic mix of colour. We have had a little bit of a setback. The tin that I used before, the, the Locker Street tin. I survived like five good cooks. I smoked with it, I steamed with it, I baked with it. This Rose's tin. Miniature Heroes. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's not watertight, so it's just falling apart. So not only has it not properly cooked the salmon, but it's put half the fire out as well. So we've had to adapt. <laughs> the lobster, however, cooked straight on the coals. Parchment paper took a little tiny bit, but this is the chilli one. Wow. There's one. Oh, I can't, and I'll just have to describe you if I can't, <laughs> unfortunately, but that smells amazing. Do you want to start off with one of these, Jim? We have. I've got some forks. Hang on. One with chilli and one with garlic. I think it's like just chilies it is. 
Right. I've just seared my thumbprint off. Trying to take this off. It stuck. It, this was that hot that it stuck to the gloves and I couldn't put it down. There you go. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. You only got lobster left, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Done three of us. I was just going to say I'll have to. I'll have to get two lobsters next time. We did two lobsters at our house. I didn't expect Emma to like it. We didn't, uh, we didn't finish them all. Mm. We've got a bit of um, a broad range of difference. If you don't like one, you you should like the other. And yeah, so far everybody's liked everything, so it's all gone pretty quick. <laughs> but we've eaten lots of lobster, so they have um, Two more minutes, get some more coals built up and we'll get them scorched on. That lobster juice is delicious. <laughs> Is that too hot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's done. Right, I've flattened out the coals and we're going to get the scallops on. Now, that is red hot. I feel it back here. Yeah, they are going to take them off to cook. All they'll do is they will sizzle in their own little cooking dish. Right, all I'm doing now is you saw that they were stuck to the shells. When they unstick, they're ready to be turned over. There. It smells so good. Yeah, that one's still just a little tiny bit stuck. That one's not quite ready to turn yet. Same with that one. Help yourself. Some have got chilli, some have got garlic. It's like a Russian roulette. Of See, that's how hot the shells are. So don't be fooled in to pick them up with your bare hands. You can generally tell which ones have got the chilli and crusty have. They've got like more of an oil on. Hmm. Like that one. <laughs> Get you, Didi. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> you look scared. Pop that on there and just take a bite. Just the texture, I don't. You're not sure Coffee. about, are you? I think I've, I've tried them years ago. But... You can always spit it out. Mm. Don't spit it out. <laughs> it's it's not a, <laughs> it isn't a bit of an intimidating thing cooking for two professional chefs cook these a lot at work hi <laughs> oh got the chili there it's the juice it's the sauce is um do mm. another one yeah please steaming please. this is definitely I think that's the best bit of the whole thing, isn't it? it? Yeah, definitely. Like the icing on the cake is like the melted butter and the chili sauce and all the juices, the little bit of bread. Now, one of our one of our Italian subscribers did tell me because there's a specific name of mopping up the juices with some bread afterwards. But I've forgotten what it is. If you know, I'll put it in the comments. Yeah, this is delicious. And to finish off, we're going to do some frisbee of some shells. Do you want one, James? The girls have all got one each. Where's that point? Where's that point? Some of them floating, are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. And James, what do we say? Bye from the fish locker. Bye. Bye bye.